Hello guys, uh, welcome back to my channel Maison African Motives are uh, still working on engineering science entry uh, still on hydraulics uh, if you still remember we worked on the other part of hydraulics where we worked with a single pump uh, that is um, some questions so now we are working on a single acting hydraulic press so we want to see how uh, they ask these questions so if you're new to my channel you can consider subscribing so that you won't miss any of the classes that we shall be having from Amazon african motives okay so let's quickly rush through the question we are given a question which is on hydraulics here the following information refers to a single this is what you're supposed to take note a single acting hydraulic press all right so on a single acting hydraulic press remember we have got two things that we actually measure uh, properly that is the plunger and the ram all right so this is what is important so you're going to have the force here on the plunger and also the diameter that you're going to have also the force on the ram and also the diameter on the ram so mostly that is the most important part in um, the formulas i'm going to talk about them so we are given the diameter of the ram which is uh, 5.5 centimeters okay so let's just take the information here uh, we are going to write this information under the ram all right then we write under the plunger so actually for the ram i always use capital letters then for the plunger for the ram capital letters then for the plunger i use small letters they, it's gonna help you a lot if you use it like that so the diameter of the ram is 5.5 centimeters so we have got the diameter i'm going to use capital letter d which is 5.5 centimeters but we know that the diameter is supposed to be in meters okay so for you to convert to meters you divide by 100 which is going to give you 0 0.055 meters all right so this is the diameter on the ram another part that we are given uh, so this is 0, 0.0 um, 05 55 meters so you can just write it here all right uh, because these units you need to change them that's why i'm writing them aside so we've got the force applied to the plunger this one you have to change it to newtons so this is the plunger you just write like f on the plunger here which is 0, 0,4 newtons so 0, 0,4 kilo newtons to newtons you can multiply by 1000 so that it becomes a uh, post kilo remember when you're given kilo you multiply by a thousand or times 10 to the power 3 like that okay which is going to give you 400 newtons so here you're going to use small letters on the plunger you use small letters okay so that you don't confuse yourself then the diameter of the plunger is 1,2 centimeters so you're going to use a small letter again which is uh, 1,2 centimeters centimeters to meters you divide by 100 okay so if you divide by 100 it's going to be 0, 0,012 meters remember you're converting to meters that's one two yes which is zero comma so you can just divide uh, using your calculator okay then what else do we have here the plunger stroke which is the height that you're going to have on the plunger stroke so this is for the plunger you're given the height of one zero comma two meters so this one is already in meters there's no need for you to convert anything here you just write as it is all right so let's see what you're given calculate the force exacted by the ram okay so we need the force that is going to be exacted by the ram here so we need the force okay we know that there is a relationship that uh, is there between the diameter the force the force also here and the diameter here on the plunger which relationship is that okay this is a 6.11 we know that the force you can uh, since we need the force on the ram we can start by this side or you can just start by this side no matter the part that you're going to start with okay but we know that the relationship that f over d squared which is diameter squared is equal to f over d squared so this is for the ram because remember you have capital letters and this is for the plunger all right so this is what is important 
so we want the force here so we can make the force to be the subject then we substitute the values or you can substitute the values depending with what you want so if you want to make this force to be the subject you simply multiply by d squared both sides multiply by d squared like that so that this can cancel so which means your force is equivalent to f over d squared multiply by d squared like that where these small letters represent the plunger take note so you're going to represent the small letter f which is the force here we said it's 400 okay so it's going to be 400 over d squared so this is d uh, the value of d here is 0 0.012 meters okay so this is going to be 0 0.012 square meter like that because this is squared there so you're going to square it multiply by d squared okay this is d squared on the ram so on the ram your d is this part here which is 0 0.055 and you square the value okay so it's now a matter of uh, the use of a calculator now so because of the light that i'm having i'm just going to write the answer here so i'm obtaining 8402,77777 and so on and there's an 8 there at the end so you can round off this um uh, depending with the degree of accuracy so i'm just going to run this to three decimal places one two three so this seven is going to change this into eight so it's seven seven eight newtons like that okay so this is the force that is going to be obtained on the ram that is exacted on the ram okay so here we've got force of eight four zero two comma seven seven eight newtons like that okay so this is or you can write it in kilo newtons if you want but you can just leave it like that okay still it's fine it's fine like that all right so that is what you're obtaining on six point um one two then let's see the other part the distance in millimeters take note here in millimeters that the ram piston we will move after 20 pumping strokes all right so take note guys whenever you are given an information that is uh, to do with the uh, pumping strokes these pumping strokes they affect remember the one that is a stroke here is the plunger so the pumping strokes they are for the plunger not for the ram they only affect the plunger take note it's 20 pumping strokes and what is pumping we are having a plunger stroke there all right so which formula am i going to use i'm going to use this formula um 6.12 we know that d squared multiplied by the plunger stroke Okay, the plunger stroke that we are given here multiply by the number of pumping strokes is the same as d squared times h which is for the for the ram okay let me explain this formula this is the plunger side and this is the ram all right you could have started with this part no problem so the formula is supposed to be like this if there are no pumping strokes these ones the formula was just supposed to be d squared uh, times h is equal to d squared times h where this h is the plunger stroke which is on the plunger side then this is the h which is representing the the plunger uh, I, that is the the height now that is on the on the ram not on the plunger, but on the on the ram so that is the distance so now because of the number of pumping strokes that we are given which are on the plunger side because remember it is the plunger that is the stroke so this n is representing the number of the pumping strokes which are not found on the ram that is why you only affect this side okay so that is the why the formula is like this okay 
so what do we want we want to find this height which is the distance so i can simply divide by d squared by d squared like this so this can cancel so it means h which is the height that i want to calculate is equal to d squared times h times number of pumping strokes over d squared so that i can simply substitute my information at once so d squared this is the d that we have on the plunger it's a small letter d so the small letter d is this one 0 comma 0 1 2 so it's 0 comma 0 1 2 squared all right multiply by h which is the the height that you're going to have on the plunger side okay so which is a 20 0 comma 2 then so it's 0 comma 2 times 0 comma 2 which is then we've got the number of pumping strokes which is n so we are given that after okay this is here after 20 pumping strokes which is n so n represents the number of pumping strokes so you multiply by 20 over d squared this is for the ram so the d capital letter d is for the ram this one so it's 0 comma 0 5 5 squared take note there's a squared here so that's it guys now it's a matter of you and your calculator now apply your calculator properly you are going to obtain a value like this uh, 0 comma 1904132231 something like that but this value is going to be in meters remember we used this height in meters this 0 comma 2 it was in meters so definitely your answer is going to be in meters so what are you going to do now to convert this to millimeters? Because remember, we are given the distance in millimeters. So milli, that's times 10 to the power minus 3. So you're going to, if it is milli, it's 10 to the power minus 3. That, that's what it means actually. So how do you convert now to, to have this 10 to the power minus 3? You are going to multiply by the opposite which is 10 to the power 3 okay that is you multiply by 1000 so you are going to multiply by 1000 all right so if you multiply by 1000 you are going to obtain uh, that's 19 190 that's 190,413. that's up to this one so you just round off to this one which is now in millimeters so you just multiply by your calculator this value is going to be something like that all right so that is what you had guys on this part where you are calculating the distance which is on the ram you take advantage of the number of pumping strokes that you're given they only affect the plunger but that is where you have a stroke there okay then let's see the other part that you're given. Uh, calculate, we are still on this part. Calculate on 6.13, the volume of the liquid displaced after 20 pumping strokes of the plunger. Okay, so still we are under these 20 pumping strokes, but we need the volume. So definitely this volume, where, where is this volume, guys? Let's start by the, obtaining the side. The volume of the liquid displaced after 20 pumping strokes of the plunger so which means you are referring to the what to the plunger so you need the volume on the plunge actually the volume on the plunger was supposed to be given by this formula the volume that is on the plunger it was supposed to be given by this formula pi d squared over 4 remember your volume guys times the height Remember volume, it's area times height. But now because there are 20 pumping strokes, take note, there are 20 pumping strokes now. So you are going to multiply by the number of pumping strokes. Now you have the volume after 20 pumping strokes. So that's the, that's the tricky part. This is the original volume. Then now multiply by number of pumping strokes. You are done. So what is going to be V? plunger the volume of the plunger is going to be pi times d squared which is the diameter on the plunger side so the diameter on the plunger side is this one the small letter d which is 0 0,012 
0, 0,012 squared over 4 times the height on the plunger. The height on the plunger is 0, 0,2. So you have got 0, 0,2 times the number of pumping strokes. Remember, we are taught after 20 pumping strokes. So you multiply by 20. So you and your calculator again. So on your calculator, you're going to obtain something like this. It is 4, comma, uh, uh, it's a crazy decimal, 4,5,2,3,8,9,3,4,2,1 times 10 to the power of minus 4 like that. This is what you're going to have on your calculator. But um, you can actually round off like 1, 2, 3, which is going to be a 4 here. So it's going to be 4,5,2,4 like that. Uh, times 10 to the power minus 4 which is a volume volume is measured in cubic meters so this is your volume and someone can convert this volume to liters if you want yes because remember we have a relationship between cubic meters and liters where you know that one cubic meter is equal to 1000 liters which is one kiloliter so if one cubic meter is equal to 1000 liters you can convert this to liters by multiplying by 1000 so you can convert to liters okay so if you multiply by 1000 you are going to obtain a volume of 0, 0.4524 4. this is going to be yeah if you just multiply this value as it is you multiply it by 1000 it is going to give you 0, 0.5 like this which is now in liters so you can choose to leave your answer in liters or to leave your answer in cubic meters still it's volume volume can be in cubic meters or it can be in liters so so many ways of expressing volume all right so let's see the other part that we're given on nine on uh, 6.2 we are given to name three elementary experiments so we need elementary experiments dealing with the pressure in liquids experiments that you can actually use where you are working with pressure okay so I have about four of them here where we are working with pressure. The first one, experiment to show that pressure in a liquid is directly proportional to depth. Okay, the second one, to show upward and downward pressure at a point in a liquid. Then the third one is an experiment on the relationship between direction of pressure in a liquid and uh, we have got the last one, which is to show that pressure in a liquid is independent of the shape and the size of the container. So these are the uh, experiments that they are needed from the from the uh, Department of Your Education, which is the Hexon, which is uh, so the, the which is uh, the netted. So there is no way, guys, on the netted, you actually need to apply these. Uh, as they are as you are given okay so i think they are pretty clear you can just take any three of your choice there okay so if you are working with this there is no way guys you just need to understand okay then the last question it was on 6.3 where we are asked to state whether the following statement is true or false the symbol for the SIE unit of pressure is Newton per square meter. Is this the symbol, guys, for pressure? Yes, that's true, guys. This is uh, Newton per square meter. It's actually true, which is the same as Pascal. Remember, it can be it can be Newton per square meter or it can be a Pascal. So that's uh, actually the units for pressure. So it's actually true, that one. So that's how they ask these questions, guys, on hydraulics. So you shall work. On more questions, uh, actually revising the questions on hydraulics and other questions. And also, we are trying by all means to start working on full question papers. So it's a matter of time again that we actually need so that we can uh, prepare for that movement uh, to work with full papers so that you can actually revise all topics at once. So it's a matter of time. Uh, we just see as time moves on. But that's it, guys, for me on African motives still working on engineering science and three till we meet again.